for all intents and purposes, you do treat them like an employee because, yeah. you know, and so if they were in America, those rules would not work. It's time for bookkeeping, beer, and BS. All right. So, so you guys, uh, so Dean's over in the Philippines. Are, are all of your VAs in the Philippines? Do you guys branch yeah. out into other areas or no? So original, no, the reason why is because we really want to, I'm, I'm somebody and who really cares about controlling the uh, quality of what we can do, but also understanding people. I traveled a lot and lived in other places when I was younger and I'm, I love intercultural communication, but I am not, I don't know what people are thinking all the time. Right. And so partnering with Dean, it made so much sense because she does understand like cultural things that come up. And mm -hmm. a lot of times the VAs will go to her anyway to, to say that they have an issue or something's going on um, yep. just because it makes more sense. It's comfortable. So I always knew that we should do it just for the Philippines. The other reason is because the cost of having a VA in the Philippines is very low. Their cost of living is much, much lower than here. So, mm -hmm. you know, you get a v, uh, an assistant, an office assistant here, you're starting probably at 15 bucks an hour minimum. Yep. Taxes, all the stuff, you're looking at 20 bucks an hour and mm -hmm. depending on what state you're in. And for the Philippines, we say the minimum that we want people to start pe their VAs at is $5 an hour. And that's- yep deductible so it's not their you know their uh contractor so so is it um let's talk about the like the the employee setup are is it are they your employee are they the are they your clients and like once you once you they train are not them and find no. them are they purely a subcontractor are they employee of somebody's what's that relation what's so, that relationship look like the first thing is I did not want to manage a thousand clients and a thousand VAs. That sounded like a nightmare, which is why we wanted to do the model of a recruiter. You know, mm -hmm. they're not going to be under, we're not going to do anything for them um, with paying them or anything like that. We just kind of help as much as we can to get them together to make a smooth transition. Mm -hmm. And then we send them off into the sunset. If they have questions, both the owner or the VA, they can always come back to us and ask us questions. We always want to help people. Mm -hmm. um, but then that VA is, so technically it's not an employee, even though technically it probably is. But I think what we, we Dean and I consulted with a lawyer in the Philippines to find out the stuff. Yeah. And it's a loophole. Like it's a gray area that has not been fixed. And that is that we can hire people from abroad and, and basically you 1099 them in a way. Yep. Um, although nobody ever gives their VAs 1099s um, that I know of, but they probably it's kind of should. Like they're, it's like they're, a, they're just a company that you're hiring, but they're an individual that you're hiring, but it's treated yes. like you're hiring a company. Yeah, but for all intents and purposes, you do treat them like an employee because, yeah. you know, and so if they were in America, those rules would not work at all yep. because we know that we can't treat somebody like an employee and have them also be a subcontractor yep. um yep. but that is the way it is right now and until further notice i don't think that they're going to be working on that anytime soon yeah uh, yeah okay that that totally clears that up